After six years of teaching how to do green screen in a tiny room, I've finally discovered how to teach the most trouble-prone, difficult, wonky, and probably most important technique, look incredible and believable against your background. Think I've overstated it? Actually, I haven't given this a fraction of the buildup it deserves. What I'm about to show you, I don't think has ever been seen before. For one thing, getting crazy hair like this looking crazy good on green screen has always been troublesome for people, especially when it's shot in rooms like this, where there's barely enough space to turn around. It's a problem because if your background doesn't physically you know, blend with your image, no matter how beautiful it is, it will really mess up your shots, starting with your hair and taking out everything around you. And that includes your credibility and believability, at least with those who take the why and the how of what you do just as seriously as when you aren't making video, which is about half the planet. For the other half, I didn't get to the point fast enough. And now that they're gone, let me show you this wonderful technique. I call it chroma fusion. Here's a piece of footage shot with the Sony Handycam FDR AX100, a fabulous camera in its day, but now it's nine years old. Its charms are beginning to fade. It has a lossy codec with poor color resolution, recorded at a low data rate when compared to today's most affordable cinema cameras. I'm using it though because I want to show you the sheer power of this technique. The first thing we have to do is color correct this footage because color correction gives us the magic number. And to do that, we're going to open up our vector scope. And when we do that, we can see that this little piece right here is in the wrong place. This is skin tone and the skin tone needs to be on this skin tone line, but it isn't. So let's put it there. And we'll do this by opening up Cinema Grade and just changing the color a little bit until it moves over to that line. It's moving over. It's moving over. It's still moving over. It's almost there. And there we go. Now, it's quite saturated, so let's take out the saturation until Steve looks you know, a little more human. A little bit more, maybe. And now let's apply some dynamic range if we can get it. And that should about do it. All right, now we've color corrected very, very quickly, I might add. And so now we're going to get our magic number. And how do we do that? We go to the waveform monitor. Wow, what a mess. So first thing you have to do is isolate that skin tone. We want to see what that number is. So we're just going to crop out everything that isn't skin tone. Now we can see that our skin tone is just over 50%. That's that number right here. Now, why is that important? Well, it turns out that YouTube needs our skin tone at at least 50% because it renders our video in a different color space normally than the ones that we edit our videos in. So I've brought it up to about 53 uh, degrees or 53 IRE units on the waveform monitor, which is perfectly fine. So we'll just now uh, uncrop the image and move on to the next step, which is to cut out the key. And uh, we cut out the key. I, I use um, a Hawaii key here and I've already optimized the key, but it's, we should, we should see or, or at least Shaq can make sure that we are still at 53 IRE units. So let's just bring it up a little bit from the bottom. And we can see there that we certainly are. So we're okay. And now we can examine what's going on in this. Let's blow it up to 150 degree. I mean, 150% 150 
of its regular size. And look at the hair. We can see some shimmering going on in the hair. Not a lot, especially considering the age of this camcorder and the fact that we're blown up to 150 degrees. That means it was, you know, shot fairly well. So, but we can do a whole lot better and we'll do better with a background. So let's look at our background now. So here's a background that is, you know, pure black, which basically is what we had before we had a background in. And so let's see what happens. We're gonna, let's, let's blow this guy up again to 100, 150 degrees, 150%, sorry. And now look over at the waveform monitor at the very bottom, zero. That's where our color is. You see, as we move this color, the, the IRE unit indicator moves. So what we wanna do, and this is the heart of the technique, we wanna move this up until it matches the 53 IRE unit line. And we'll play it back. And we can see that the shimmering is gone. Why is the shimmering gone? Well, because it blended with the skin tone parameters. Let's move on to an actual background because you know, you're not always gonna to wanna to just shoot with a flat background. How do you work with a real background? Well, essentially the same way, only we'll use a slightly different tool to get us there. And the tool we'll use is whatever your editor uses uh, to adjust color. Now, we are looking for an area around here, around the middle of the screen, right? So we can, we don't have to pay much attention to what's going on on the right and the left of the screen, do we? All we have to do is look at what's going on in the middle. First, let's play it at 150% and see what we're getting. Well, it seems like we're getting very, very little shimmering. How, why would that be? Well, let's take a look and we'll find out. If we look at the midtones of this background and move them up and down, we can see that area in the middle when we just go to center is almost at the 53 line, isn't it? So we just pull it up, you know, a couple points or really even nothing. And we're, and we're there. We essentially don't have to make any more adjustments. And we will look at this at 150%. We see kind of hardly anything. And if we look at it, you know, in it like the way it would be seen in a regular video, it looks perfectly fine. What about this one? This is one, this background is almost pure white. And if we look at this blown up to 150%, we can see quite a bit of shimmering over here. Quite a bit of shimmering. That's because as we get lighter, um, it, it gives us more contrast. So if we go to the waveform monitor again, and look at our exposure settings, especially the ones in the middle of the screen, which is where we are. If we raise this one up, we can, we can see where the midtones are. And if we bring those midtones down to 53%, and there's some highlights there in the middle too, if we bring those down closer to 53%, we should get better results, let's see. So we see essentially nothing going on in the hair. And if we put it at the uh, size that people will be seeing it, it's perfect. Now here's, here's an example. This is something that comes with Final Cut Pro. It's called Sports. Um, and it's a, you know, a sporty moving background. But what's happening in the hair? Let's take a look. Darn little, huh? Very little going on, maybe a little over here. And this, it's this crazy moving background and we're getting almost nothing going on in the hair. Do you know why? Of course you know why. Let's raise up the midtones and see where they are. Now we can see where the midtones are, right? 
If we bring that down to zero, they're way below. Although the highlights of the midtones are higher, I want to bring this a little higher so that it uh, it starts to approach what our skin tone is. And what about our highlights? Those are about there in the middle as well. And the low lights, we can bring those. We don't really have to touch those. And so let's see what we've got now. Rock solid. It's a very simple technique. One last thing. Obviously, this technique works best on well-shot video, no matter what kind of camera is shooting it. So if you'd like to be able to shoot footage that can get all the power available from the Chroma Fusion technique, click here or in the description below. And we'll see you next time on The Visible Authority.